What's up, ladies? Hey, Blake. How you doing? Listen, I didn't want to put you on blast in front of all other girls. We have a problem. A big problem or a little problem? We've been waiting for two months to get our photos back? What the fuck? Listen, I'm really sorry. Really, really sorry. It's been one thing after another. I've been super busy. I promise you, after this event, you'll get your stuff back. You better. Don't make me put you on blast in front of all the other girls and social media. Terrifying. <laughs> hey, yeah. remember, you're here to watch our backs, not theirs. Yeah. That's the thing for me. That's what I'm talking about. I got your back, OK? Just don't cock block me. You've been a buzzkill my entire life, you know that? Not really. Just go shake your asses or whatever it is that you do. Whatever, Come Jim. On. Seriously, Jim. <laughs> the guy I worked with on my last photo shoot was such a jerk. You too? What happened on yours? Oh, that asshat would tell me to pose certain ways, get frustrated with me, and then lay his fucking hands on me, repositioning me without permission. I wonder if it was the same photographer I worked with. That asshat would raise his voice and yell. I mean, literally scream at me if I didn't do stuff exactly the way he wanted. I was new to portrait photography. I had only done runway modeling before, and he knew that. Yeah, it just took me so long to get my photos. Oh my God, I know. Sometimes it just takes forever. Like, I've had so many issues with photographers not getting me my photo back from TFPs. Seriously, I had to start bringing a contract. So basically it just says that you're gonna get me my photos within a reasonable amount of time. I got 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. And if you take any longer than that, then you're just gonna pay my regular fee, 75 an hour. So yeah, can I have one? Cause like, oh. I, this is my first shoot and so. Yeah, it's just like, I can send it to you. Yeah, that would be so great. Cool. What's your Avery, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I think I got you on Facebook. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, totally. Hey, can I ask you for a favor? What's up? So, you know, I'm getting back into modeling and uh -huh. um, I didn't like my last experience. I'm just kind of uh, asking you to watch my back. The previous photographer, he just kept pushing for me to take off more and more clothes and it was just <sighs> so uncomfortable yeah. and he was so rude about it, you know? Yeah, I got your photographer try the same shit with me. I totally understand you. I got you. Hey. Hey. You're so beautiful. Gorgeous and fabulous. Have I seen you here before? Probably not. It's my first shoot, actually. Oh. Yeah, my sister over there got me into it. Oh, that's so nice of you to go with your sister. Yeah. How long has she been modeling for? Uh, Give or take 10 years. I don't know, she's been in quite a few projects. So, oh. Yeah. Well, Hi, sorry, can I borrow my client for a second? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, this is your first shoot, right? Yeah, I'm pretty excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah, just thanks for making all of this happen. <laughs> my pleasure. I just need to make sure that you know a few things before we get started. If you do trade for print, which I'm not an advocate for, you need to be prepared to do a few things. What? I'm pretty sure it's all in the contract. Uh, no, no, no. This is about being safe and smart. Safe and smart. Is there something I don't know about? Like, I want to do this, and I want to be here. I want to do all this, but... Well... <sighs> Relax. Okay. Uh, so... Let me put it this way. There are two major things that you really need to do when you're starting out. You need to make sure you know who your photographer is before you work with them. 
-hmm. Two, if you meet anyone here tonight or, uh, you know, on a Facebook group, especially a Facebook group, you know, you can't just assume that they are, they are good. I uh, hate to say it, but just because you have 20 mutual friends with them doesn't make them, you know, reputable. Um, you have to ask those mutual friends or any other person that's worked with this photographer what their experience was like with them, okay? Well, this seems like something you should have told me before I got here. Well, uh, you're here now, but, um, you know, be comfortable, okay? Don't do anything you don't want to, all right? That's that's why we're here, just be comfortable, have fun. Um, there's a lot of amazing talent out here. It's not, you're not gonna find a lot of bad people all the time, but there are those bad apples. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I really should have checked this guy out. Yeah, so, well, so should I have, but I mean, hey, that's why I'm here. Uh, but you know, Laura, over there, yeah, she vouches for him. So I think we should be okay. Good afternoon, Candy. Nice to How are you see doing? you. I'm happy to have you model and grace my Bella Moore jewelry today. And Thank you. we love having wow. my, our you. beautiful Candy is modeling for us today. Hi, hi, ladies. Hello. Hi, hi. hi. My name is Frank. What's your name? My name is Candy. Nice Candy to meet you. Candy and Eunice. Mia. Mia. Uh, so you said you're a model, correct? Yes. That's great. I am. Um, I'm actually a local photographer myself, and I was potentially considering maybe trying to collaborate with some models uh, that were in the event today. Uh -huh. uh, so one thing I haven't done is I haven't done runway modeling before. And yeah, I must say, Candy is amazing to see on the runway. I witnessed oh, it oh, good, many good. times, and yeah. here you are. It was a pleasure meeting you. Good to see you. Yeah, you. take care. Very nice, awesome. Uh, so what were we talking about? We were talking about um, modeling, runways. So you're a model, you do runways. I have, don't have any experience with that. Can you show me how you would walk down a runway and what you do during that? And if you mind, I can take some reference sh shots and you can kind of just walk down and show me? Yeah, sure, sure. Is that we fine? can what practice you... a little bit, yep. Perfect. Let's uh, let's try that. So maybe stand here, then yep. I'll be right over there and we'll kind of just Sounds do some good. shots? Yep. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, but mostly just the ladies. <laughs> I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know a lot of you have come from a long ways to support this cause. But this year, I think we're going to raise even more money than last year. I'd like to propose a toast to the crew to the new ones, to the older ones. Mazel tov.
That night was such a blur for me. You guys were gonna get free. And then I remember you broke down the door. What happened? So you want me to start from the beginning? Lacey and I got out. That was the first thing that happened. We opened the door and we ran a lot. And then afterwards, I saw the creek, I saw two bodies in it. One of them looked like Jim, and I was just really hoping that it wasn't him, but... So I ran down the side of the creek, and he was dead. Like, shot him. So, he shot my manager, too. After that, Lacey told me to go ahead and get the phone from the back of her car. So I ran for that, and luckily, Dad was just a few... It was just a few streets away. Afterwards... He had me a gun, and we were going back inside. I heard him screaming. Get the fuck down! Get the fuck right now! Get the fucking move! Cut his dick off! Cut his legs Even off! He was dickless and blind, he'd still have that image in his head. All the shit that he did to you. You don't get to keep that. You stand there, motherfucker, huh? Open up your fucking mouth, asshole. Open up your fucking mouth. I ain't gonna tell you. I don't regret it. It's okay. It's okay. I know y'all have been through a lot. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. I just want to let you know it's taken care of. They'll never come back to you. I took care of the body. I took care of everything. I just, I feel bad. I feel bad for all of you, what you went through. Nobody should have to go through that. Well, we got to make sure this kind of stuff never happens again. And um, I'm so grateful that some of you are okay, but we got to make sure nobody is ever threatened again. So I, I run a martial arts school, as you know, that this H. Warrior Temple, and I'm going to make sure that uh, none of Mia's models ever 
get hurt again, I'm going to send some of my students to help protect um, when you're out there so you won't be alone. So now that we have all discussed that, how about you all follow me to the magical garden for the wine temple? Get a little history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nikki? Yes. Can I talk to you in private? Yes, of course. What happened? Nikki. Yes, please. Thank you so much for having me in. Just inviting me in general makes me so nice. So happy. You are amazing. You are part of our family. <laughs> you make me feel like family. Of course Thank you, you are. You are a precious for us. Thank you. I just don't know, like, since coming back. Whether or not I feel strong enough to be here. Oh, I'm here anytime for you. You can call me, you can text me. So I'll do my best for you. Believe me. I love you guys, all of you. And like I said, you are amazing. Thank you. I know. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, oh, Nikki. Welcome to Noe's Nest Wine Temple. The wine is not the spirit. It's your spirit for everything you have gone through. And your spirits will rise out here in this magical garden. How about the history? JC and I put this wine temple together. We designed it. We bought the glass first. The front doors are from the Herbs Mansion. The glass back here is from a mega salvage from a church outside of Paris. It is 400 years old. Being surrounded by this in this magical garden, the magic is you. What you bring to it, what you have lived through, what you can get from this moment, this moment here and now in this wine temple. It's yours. So without getting anybody in trouble yourself, you know, maybe leaving names out, but do you have a situation that you overcame that you want to share with us? Sure, yeah. I I think every model has come to the situation to some extent. Um, I've been fortunate enough that I've been able to stop these situations from happening from the messages. Um, I had a photographer who was already in the business, but with like the landscape style wanting to get into model work. Mm -hmm. And he messaged me saying, hey, let's do some portrait work. I thought, great, no problem. Um, do you have a mood board is what I asked him. And he said, sure, let me send you my ideas. And the first picture, which was a huge red flag, was of a girl completely nude in the middle of the woods. Okay. And I was like, well, you know, if you're just starting off with models, you probably want to build a rep with models before you start undressing them. And I already in my portfolio don't share any boudoir or nudity or implied nudity. So it was already weird that he got the idea that I would be comfortable with that with it being my first time working with him with the fact that he had never worked with models the fact that I don't share any work like that on my portfolio it's very lifestyle type of modeling and so he very quickly reverted back to okay let's just do some normal lifestyle in the city and I was already kind of hesitant you know he already gave me some weird vibes 
just off the fact that that was his first thought was to go that route. Um, and I, I still wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I said, okay, well, you know, send me a mood board on what you think you want to do with the lifestyle. I have some ideas I'm willing to share as well. And then he just completely blocked me. He had blocked me on all of social media. And I was like, okay, this is weird. Um, but I feel like if I wasn't a, someone that already kind of had an idea of the industry, if I wasn't warned in the beginning of my career to, you know, be wary of red flags, you know, be the type of person that brings someone with you when you meet a new photographer. Um, if you have a gut feeling that this isn't going to go well, it's probably not going to go well. If I would have just gone with it, I, I don't know what would have happened. He wants to go in the middle of the woods. He wanted me to be naked and it just sounded like a recipe for disaster. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, has this story been shared uh, with anybody uh, like to sharing that on social media or, or anywhere else? Or is this the first time you've shared it uh, openly? Um, I've shared it with some model friends of mine personally. Um, I know I've had some friends start the industry slowly after me and they I'm always like, yeah, you know, I give them the same advice. Be wary of who you're going to be with, you know, do your homework. That's the biggest one I tell people if they've worked with models, message the models that they've worked with previously to ask them their experience. You know, did they have a good time? Was they, were they a little weird? Um, things of that sort. So I've never really shared it out publicly to, uh, you know, other models in the industry or other photographers. Um, I know that there's like Instagram groups that share photographers that aren't safe to work with just to warn other models um, to, hey, don't work with them. They've harassed or molested or abused models. So they put them on the nope list. And so, you know, I, what the name of that group is? The one that I'm in is the Bay Area Nope List. Nope List. All right. That's that's a good one to be aware of and to know. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm sure there's some in other, you know, regions and stuff, but the one I'm in is specifically for the Bay Area since that's where I'm located. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes. And accepted for a photo shoot down in Manchester. And that was my first ever photo shoot. And uh, this was a, a company saying, come down to Manchester for the, the photo shoot and we'll give you a portfolio and everything will be fine. And I thought, right, so I went down to Manchester just for a couple hours to do this photo shoot. And um, we went and done the shoot. And at the end of the day, the lady's like, right, come in and have a look at your photos. And the next minute it was so... Um, you need to pay fifteen hundred pounds for these photos, and I went. Oh, I've not got fifteen hundred pounds just now. And she says, "No, we can actually let you pay like a couple of hundred just now, and then you go away and you pay every month." And I was like, "But I was new to this, so I went right, okay, then no problem." So I ended up paying like two thousand pounds uh, because they had to send it out to maybe all the photos and stuff. And um, it wasn't until they, they'd says, oh, we will give you links uh, to all these groups that you can join. And I thought, right, okay then. And But then I didn't know they were for free. They could join Purple Port for free. So <laughs> so I got my photos and I got my, my portfolio and it was a lovely day. And, you know, now I just look back and say it was a lovely day. And was it worth £2,000? Maybe no, but... <laughs> But I enjoyed, I enjoyed the day, and that's what I went for. So in the three-ish plus years now, if a newer model wanted to come in, what would you want to tell them? I would say always make sure you check the photographer out. It's not just the photographer, because models can be funny as well. I've heard some horror stories from photographers. But um, as I say, models always check who you're going to shoot with. Get the, Get people you know tell them where you're going don't ever go yourself without telling anywhere where you're going and um, explain to each other about the shoot before you go make sure you know your levels make sure you're not going to get entrapped into any more than what you're willing to to go and do because uh, I know they can talk you into it and they can uh, oh just a wee and just a wee and then that's not very good you know uh, make sure you know the place that you're going to you know ask friends if you if you have no like, model friends or whatever is yet just ask friends you know right always make sure you know where you're going 
Yeah, and someone knows or, or brings someone with you too. Have you have you done that? Yeah. yeah, I've brought a chaperone a couple of times. Yeah, yep. No. Uh, it, that's just because it was a photographer that maybe I didn't know, and maybe other it was a new photographer, you know, and um, you went and and it was in the studio as well. Um, I didn't know this guy, and I'd actually asked um the the guy the owner. It says to him, listen, I don't know this photographer. And he says, it's okay. Uh, you can bring your chaperone up. And so she just sat in the, the changing rooms and I done my shoot. And it was quite good, you know. Wonderful. So I, nothing too horrible or, or is it just um, other than that one experience of a guy financially entrapping you? Or is it <laughs> at a right? Yeah, it's been, it's been okay. So it has, I've heard some horror stories from photographers though, you know. Um, yeah, this movie's not about bashing photographers at all. So yeah, yeah, I would love to hear your point of view, what what you're talking about there. Yeah, the, the photographer had went to a shoot and he'd uh, set it up for, it was a wedding shoot, but they were doing pre-photos uh, in the gowns and uh, that one of the bridesmaids couldn't show up on the day, so they had arranged for a separate day. So the photographer went and made the bridesmaid and she had a man and another woman with her and they were getting set up and the next minute they needed a ladder. So the photographer went, I'll go and I'll go and get a ladder and by the time he came back, they took all his gear, all his camera stuff and his stands, they took everything and left with it all. Oh, Honestly. wow. Mm -hmm. One photographer who was really well known to the native population and as well as to my friend who guided me into photo shoots. She had told me that he was a good guy, that he will get you into magazines and that he really represents the native American population. And so I took that offer and I reached out to him like, why not? Let's see what he can do. So I messaged him and he said, yeah, let's shoot totally nice guy on Messenger. He was very cooperative, was very keen on making this a Native American model photo shoot. Right. And he was great until the day of the photo shoot. Okay, so what went sideways? Yeah, it did went sideways, unfortunately. We first started and I got, I was lost. I'm not from Albuquerque, New Mexico. So when I first moved here, I'm still learning stuff around the area. Right. And when I reached out to him asking specifics, where exactly are we going to do the photo shoot and where is the best location for me to meet you? And he would take a while to respond, like maybe 10 to 15 minutes in between messages to let me know where I'm going. Huh. Yeah. So I drove around quite a bit into the trail parks and try to look for a car that he stated that he was driving. But unfortunately, there was a few cars that looked exactly like his car. So I would wait, I'd check to see, is that him? Is that him? But it wasn't him and ended up driving back down past the trail to a different location. And he was there right at the intersection waiting. And I told him, I tried messaging you and I don't know this area, I've mentioned it before, but he was like, well, you should know your location before you have a shoot with people. So I said, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry. We're here, so we continue to do the photo shoot. We did a few in a gown, my Native American traditional gown, and he loved the gown. He thought it was a beautiful artwork, beautiful shoot, but he was critiquing me to about every single little thing, my face, how I look, I'm not wholly native. So he would make certain comments degrading how I looked and that the only thing that was good about me was my gown. And that was hard. Yeah, we call that lack of bedside manners. That's just ridiculous, go on. Uh, then we were talking about another outfit that I could do. So I did another outfit for um, kickboxing. And I had a crop top on, I had my gear, my bandages, everything set like as if I'm going boxing. And he said, I don't really like how you're positioning yourself. 
you need to make, be in a position where your body hurts. That's the best capture. And I was like, okay, sure. So I tried doing the exact positions that he wanted, but it was really hurtful to me to where I would collapse and tell him, I can't do that position. It just hurts. He would then say, well, this is how you get the perfect shot. And if you don't get the perfect shot, then there's no point in doing the shoot. Huh. So I said, okay, so I toughed it out. Then he stated, do you know what a, a new photo shoot is? And I was like, yeah, you're fully undressed. And he was like, no, put your arm out. So I put my arm out and he saw, took a photo. He was like, you see how your arm is bare? I said, yeah. He said, well, that's a new photo shoot. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. And then he said, I don't really like how you have the bandages on or you have the mitts on or anything. I was like, well, that's what a kickboxer wears. Right. When I'm going to practice, I look exactly like this. And he said, well, to get into the business, you have to show skin. I'm like, oh, well, I'm aware of some things that you have to do, but I'm not confident enough to do that kind of thing. And now, he mentioned ahead of time that this would be a possibility or something he might want to do with you, or this is just like right on the spot? Right on the spot. Okay. And so we were continuing the shoot and since I was wearing a crop top, it was breezy. So of course it'll fly around. Not, it's a crop top. Right. So he proceeded and said, I think you should take the crop top off and face towards the city. That would be a pretty shoot. And I think that would probably look better for your gear and everything. I'm like, hmm, I'm not too comfortable taking my shirt off, you know? Right. And he's like, well, no one's going to see your face and everything. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot, you know, get out of my comfort zone. I did face the city and he saw my back and everything. And he was like, see, this is a better shot instead of having your face shown with your mitts on. And it really ate at me that this kind of words were coming out of his mouth, you know, cause it, it was just hard. Yeah. So have you had some experiences, um, try, you know, even yeah. in yeah, so no, so thank goodness I've never had an experience, though I have come across people who have tried to lure me in. And I should say that with basically me reaching out to their, for example, there was this one time that I replied to a Craigslist ad because I actually got a couple of gigs from Craigslist, like actual professional real ones. Um, and one of them was for, it was like club wear. And when the, when I got the initial email that they were interested in everything, um, I asked a certain, you know, you have to ask your questions and I asked, you know, could I have a, that? Let's say I'm a new model. What do you mean by that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So for, as a new model, you definitely have to ask questions as far as where exactly, like what company is this for? Please send me the link and website link. Please send me an Instagram link. Please send me the Facebook link. Um, you have to ask those, those questions. And then also, um, where is the shoe taking place? Exactly. What is the address? What is, you, you know, what, what is the times If all of these little things that I found, like I've found that you really need to ask, um, to make sure that you, what happens if you miss one of those pieces of the puzzle, what happens? Then you have to dig deeper and you have to, <laughs> what I did is I actually asked, like I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think to this e with these emails is basically what, what's the also to like, what's the pay, but like, if they don't give you any of that information or one of the links is missing, then that's a very crucial problem. And actually now that I'm referring back to my email, when the website link wasn't working or it just seemed very shady, I, um, what of oh, red flag? Did you say red flag? Yes. Yeah. When it was a red flag, I asked, can I please have your contact information? Can I have your Facebook? Can I have your Instagram? Can I have all of your, so like, what's, what's, what's your actual real name? When they don't get, if they give you like a false type of, or I should say just like a random name and they don't give you an actual, I think now that everybody has a social media account, I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. I think most people now, especially within the fashion industry, 
have social media accounts. Right. So they're, the, the, so when that website, you know, when they sent me that shady website link, when they were asking me to meet them at a, you know, it just didn't seem like a, a, a random like type of place, a house or even a coffee shop. Um, I asked, please, can you, what, what is your, what's your Instagram handle? What's your Facebook? And it's interesting because then they, when, when you ask those questions, they, they, they come back and you can tell when someone is being manip manipulative and they say, oh, like I'm a, I'm a very high end fashion, you know, fashion uh, designer and I don't have it, you know, I don't need to have an Instagram. I've been in this industry for this many long, when they start getting defensive, that's when you know something, yeah something is not right and they probably want to do you harm um, so, yeah keeping safety in mind what other things would you have in in collaborating because i mean i i started out in photography a little about a year ago a little over a year ago and i was on facebook groups and um just saying i'm a new photographer looking forward to meeting with somebody you know and there were some people, you know, that uh, were quick to, yeah, let's do, let's meet. And I mean, I'm a dad of two. I have a 24 year old and a, and a 19 year old. Um, they didn't bring anybody with them, which. That was another thing I was going to say, always bring somebody with you. And that was another red flag is when I, when you ask these people on, you know, again, on Craigslist, perhaps it is, or even Facebook group may I bring somebody and they say no, that is one of the biggest red flags that I have seen as well. Right. This movie is not to put photographers under the bus, right? As one that does photography, you know, I want to walk in integrity. I want people to trust me and have long-term relationships and different campaigns, things of that nature. So how would you, if, if uh, a photographer was willing to be open-minded, teachable, and, and take suggestions, what would you say to uh, a new photographer coming in? And then we're going to talk about new models coming in. So what would, you, what would you say to the new photographer? As in how to photo uh, photograph yeah, how to, me? Yeah how, to, yeah, how to work with you. OK. Well, I always like to look at the pictures, you know, in between every few pictures and say, okay, maybe we can do this here a little bit differently, get the angle a little bit different, you know, because I'm still, you know, I get on a roll and then all of a sudden like the pandemic happened, you know, or I got pregnant or something like that. It was kind of like, I, I stop and go type of thing. So, you know, now that I know a little bit more about photography, then I, um, the photo photographers that I work with I go and tell them okay well this angle because I am plus size okay maybe I should try this angle a little bit better you know instead um so that I can make sure that it looks smoother or you know whatnot right. um and you know I, usually I ask them I was like what do you think that I look like how does it where do you think I should angle if you think I'm angling wrong you know or let's try something different because maybe you can get a trick that I don't know already, and then we can incorporate both of our ideas. Right. You have some pointers for um, models, you know, especially I've been, um, I would answer any ad and I, they wanted like credit card number before I really knew what was going on type of thing. And yeah, they wanted a, um, six flags. I remember it very clearly. It was several years ago. Um, really, really wanted to get into the modeling and they said, "Is this is a paid gig, but you we have to have your credit card number to secure your placement." And uh huh, and yeah. Now that I'm a little bit wiser, <laughs> you know, that was dumb, you know. But I, I got taken advantage of that. They spent like two thousand dollars on my credit card. But you were able to get it back, right? Unauthorized. Um, I was able to stop it after like three hundred dollars, like because I mean it was over the weekend. So by the time I realized what was going on then it was they got me for three hundred dollars already yeah so yeah if it was something that happened with a photographer you, you said i thought on the phone you said it was one thing um something about a favor can you expound on what that was about um the gentleman wanted me to um he wanted to ph photograph me and him um 
having sex, you know, and I told him, I says, you know what, I'm not like that. And that um, I'm, <laughs> I'm necess not necessarily religious, but I have morals and values. <laughs> and so I appreciate the thought because I don't ever want to close doors, you know, and I will never sell anybody out. But at that point, I was like, no, thank you. I appreciate that you want to work with me, but no, thank you. <laughs> and have you ever worked with this person? No, I have not. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I told him, I was like, I'm willing to pay you for the work that you will do, right. but I am not willing to do the other. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, and that's incredibly embarrassing to talk about. So just like, you know, because I mean, like I said, I feel like I am selling the person out, even though I'm not telling their name, but yeah. You know, I've heard about models being, you know, on set, coerced to uh, coerced. Uh, what is a coerced? Um, coaching <laughs> Coach and you know a little more off the shoulder, okay. And once you yeah. going, um, I'm sorry, it's coming rated R. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and they want you know want more and and being sexualized, and that is an issue. And it you know that's what I'm saying. Uh, one of the things like in this latter part of uh, the movie here that we're doing. Again, not wanting to throw photographers under the bus, but how can we help new photographers coming in, you know, to help them succeed? And the model feels safe, and she's uh, he or she is getting the service, you know, and having a good experience on set with that photographer. Mm -hmm.